Japan watched with great interest the Allies' strategic bombing campaign against Germany, and she watched with fear. It was obvious that the Allies would try the same methods against Japan as soon as island bases within range of the home islands had been captured. Like Germany, Japan cast around for aircraft with which to counter the coming onslaught, and noted the German advances in rocket and jet aircraft that appeared to offer the best chance of stopping the Americans. Germany and Japan were military allies, though they didn't quite trust each other, consistently failing to inform each other of their plans, and Japan also refused to go to war with the Soviet Union. But nonetheless, some cooperation was undertaken. Due to Japan's conquest in Southeast Asia, she had access to many natural resources denied to Germany, particularly strategic materials such as rubber and certain drugs such as the anti-malarial quinine both in short supply to the Germans. The Germans could make trade worthwhile for the Japanese by exchanging high-tech equipment with the Japanese in return for raw materials under a secret trade program codenamed Yanagi. Initially, material was to be sent by surface ships known as blockade runners, but as Allied naval and air forces gained dominance over the sea lanes between Europe and the Far East, this trade was driven beneath the waves, using submarines to ferry plans, goods and personnel between Europe and the Far East, perilous voyages that involve U-boats, specially converted Italian submarines and Japanese submarines as well. The problem for both sides was the small volume of goods that could be sent by submarine, owing to the boat's size and cargo capacity. Nevertheless, Japanese submarines sailed all the way to German-occupied France on several occasions during the war, and German and Italian submarines visited Japanese-occupied Indonesia, Malaysia and even Japan, including, eventually, the creation of a series of German U-boat bases on the Japanese side of the Indian Ocean, from whence anti-convoy hunting missions were also launched. In Europe, Japanese military attaches attached to the embassy in Berlin were often permitted to view the latest German technology. At one point, Japanese army officers purchased a German Tiger and Panther tank, but neither was shipped to Japan due to size and weight. I've made a video about this fascinating subject, so please do check out the end screen. Aircraft, on the other hand, could be sent east in disassembled form. I first came across this story when I was researching my first book, called Yanagi, in 2004-5. One German aircraft in particular caught the attention of the Japanese. The Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet was a potent little aircraft. A point-defense fighter, it was the only rocket-powered aircraft to see combat in World War II. Enormously fast for the period, it was the first aircraft to exceed a thousand kilometers an hour in level flight. Though the rocket fuel was not particularly stable, it was launched with a detachable undercarriage and would climb rapidly to the American bomber streams, having fuel for seven and a half minutes of flight, enabling the comet to make one or two very high-speed gun passes at the B-17s, firing its two cannons, before gliding back down to land on its retractable skid at the airfield. Thrown into combat before the plane was properly tested and the personnel trained, some limited actions towards the end of the war saw comets shoot down between 9 and 18 enemy aircraft, with 10 comets lost, mostly to enemy fighters as the comet, fuel exhausted, lost its speed edge as it came back into land as a glider. However, the Japanese were very impressed by the trial flight that they witnessed at the home of the Luftwaffe's Testing Command 16, the new Comet Squadron. Japan asked Germany for the rights to license build the Comet, particularly its Walter HWK 509A rocket engine. The Germans agreed, at a high price. The plan was to send one Factory Fresh 163 to Japan, along with two sets of sub-assemblies, components, complete blueprints for the aircraft and its engine, three brand new HWK 509A engines, and associated materials, including specialists. From all this, the Japanese hoped to build their own version of the 163 to take on the coming waves of American B-29 superfortresses, intent on bombing Japan into the Stone Age. The one slight problem was how to move all of this material to Japan. 
a German Type 9C-40 U-boat was transferred to the Imperial Japanese Navy in 1944. After training a Japanese crew in Germany, the U-1224, now recommissioned as the Japanese submarine RO-501, departed Kiel in northern Germany loaded with Yanagi cargo, including the complete Messerschmitt 163, in addition to tons of other cargo. The destination was the Japanese naval base at Penang in Malaya. One refuelling rendezvous was planned with the Japanese submarine I-8 in the Indian Ocean. However, the RO-501 was intercepted by a hunter killer group based on the aircraft carrier USS Bogue and five destroyer escorts. The RO-501 was destroyed by hedgehog bombs and depth charges, killing all 52 aboard, two of whom were German specialists, including one Luftwaffe pilot. The three German rocket engines the Japanese had purchased were sent separately aboard the Japanese submarine I-29, which departed Lorient in German-occupied France on the 16th of April 1944 and arrived safely in Singapore on the 14th of July. However, after departing Singapore for the last leg of her journey to Japan, the I-29 was sunk near the Philippines by the USS Sawfish on the 26th of July 1944. One important piece of the ME-163 puzzle survived the loss of the I-29. When the Japanese submarine had docked at Singapore, one Japanese naval officer had gone ashore and been flown to Japan, carrying with him the ME-163's basic instruction manual. The Japanese would try to build a comet using just this document. A contract to design and build a comet like Interceptor went to Mitsubishi to produce a version for both the Imperial Army and Navy air services. The first Mitsubishi J8M1 mock-up was completed in September 1944. From that, a working prototype was built. On the 8th of December 1944, Lieutenant Commander Toihiko Inuzuka took to the air piloting a glider version of the J-8M1, the MXY-8. The Japanese had done a great job in mimicking the flight characteristics of the ME-163. Two more gliders were built for tests. Another factory fresh ME-163 Comet was disassembled in Germany and loaded aboard U-864 for shipment to Japan, this German U-boat departing Kiel on the 5th of December 1944. This boat also carried 67 tons of mercury for use in Japanese explosives, and among the passengers were two Messerschmitt engineers and two Japanese experts. But this second ME-163 never made it to Japan either, U-864 being intercepted and torpedoed by the British submarine HMS Ventura just off the Norwegian coast. I've made a program about this subject for my other channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Please check out the end link. The next phase for the Japanese was the marrying of an airframe with a locally made rocket engine. Mitsubishi, Nissan and Fuji would build the airframe and the Yokosuka arsenal the engine. Although very similar to the ME-163 in appearance, the Japanese aircraft was a lot lighter, using more wood in its internal frame and tailplane. It had no armoured glass to protect the pilot, and would carry cannons with less ammunition. Fuel capacity was also reduced, limiting even further the seven and a half minutes of powered flight available to the ME-163. Mitsubishi would manage to build seven operational examples of the J-8M1 before the end of the war. Commander Inuzuka made the first powered flight on the 7th of July 1945, two months after the German surrender. After successfully taking off, the engine stopped at about 1,300 feet, causing the plane to stall. Making an emergency landing, the plane burst into flames and Inuzuka died of his injuries the following day. More prototype tests were made, and modifications were made to the operational aircraft. Flight testing resumed in August 1945. 
the Japanese were prepared to push the concept of the J-8M1 aircraft much further than the Luftwaffe with its ME-163, with plans to use them to ram American B-29s once the two powered gun runs had been completed, essentially suicide missions, but very much in keeping with the late war Japanese military tradition, the kamikaze self-sacrifice for emperor and sacred homeland. Fortunately for all concerned, the war ended before the J-8M1 and the M2 version became operational. If enough had been produced, and without any thought for pilot survival, they could have been a potent menace to the US bomber streams, though their impact would probably have been minimal, just like the ME-163 had in Europe, due to the vast scale of the aerial onslaught. Two Japanese J-8Ms survived today. One example, captured by the US as part of a pair, was shipped to America in November 1945 for evaluation. It is now displayed at the Plains of Fame Museum in Chino, California. A second example was found quite by luck in a cave in Japan in the 1960s, and was restored by Mitsubishi and is today in a private museum in Japan. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.